Why does society continue to throw men in the trash? Men today live in a tempest of confusion. Dr. Bradford Carlton is a beacon in the storm. Welcome back to Beacon in the Storm. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford, storm rider Carlton. Today is June 19th, 2023, and we are talking about throwing men in the trash and how society and specifically liberals treat men as disposable, as if we don't matter. Our lives don't matter. Our health doesn't matter. Our mental health doesn't matter. All that matters is that we provide to society. And as soon as we're used up, washed out, we're done, we throw us away. All right. And we can see like, well, let's just have a conversation about what a boy's or a man's life is like. All right. We start off life being told that we're a boy, that being a boy, being a man means certain things that you have to believe certain things about yourself. You have to act certain ways. You're allowed to feel certain things, but you're not allowed to feel other things. Right. A boy isn't allowed to be scared. He's told to toughen up. He's not allowed to be sad. He's told to stop being a wimp. He's told that he has to he has to be aggressive. We put him into sports and we tell him to go get him, kill him, go get him, right? Urgh. And he's allowed to feel anger. That's what he's allowed to feel. And so we tell him to go out there and then we put him in school. And the boy who, you know, has been told that he's supposed to be energetic, supposed to be angry, supposed to boys will be boys. They do weird things. They take risks, right? We tell them all this stuff as they're growing up. And so now they're in school and they're being boys. They're hyper. They're active. They want to they want to do stuff. They're energetic. They take risks, they're risky kids. Right. And then guess what? So a lot of these kids get detention. A lot of them get into disciplinary trouble. A lot of them, their grades suffer for it because, well, at what point was a boy supposed to be smart? Boys are supposed to be action oriented. They're supposed to go do things. They're supposed to help women and children. They're supposed to, supposed to, supposed to, supposed to, all these things that a, a man is supposed to be, right? And so when they get into school and schools are tailored more for girls, they're, they have desks, they sit there and they're supposed to pay attention. And the studies and all the science shows that little girls are better behaved. They're able to concentrate longer. They're able to sit there and be quiet longer where boys, just, they got to get moving. They got to do stuff, right? You know, men are supposed to be action oriented. So they get these little boys get into trouble and a good number of these little boys end up into so much trouble. Either they don't get through school or if they do get through school, there's no hope for them getting into college because their grades were never good enough. And so a lot of these men end up in prison. In fact, the vast majority of the prison population is men. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of men are in prison. And we have private prison systems nowadays. And so the private prison systems are all about the almighty dollar. And so there's not even necessarily about what the purpose of prison was originally for. And like I was, a, I was a lawyer. So in law school, we talked about this, that the point of punishment in criminal law is either retribution. So actually just punishing the person for doing something bad or rehabilitation, which is training the person to be a good upstanding member of society. So they don't do these bad things anymore. All right. So we, as you know, generally as Americans, at least we tend to focus on the punishment aspects. Other countries focus on the rehabilitation aspects. They have classes and they make sure they do plenty of reading and they make sure that they're treated like human beings who did something wrong, who made a mistake and might need to learn from it. Whereas in America, we stick them in cages. We treat them worse than dirt. When they come out, we don't say that you've served your time, you've done what you were supposed to. We now call them a convict and we treat them differently when they get out and they're not able to get jobs anymore. And then the recidivism rate is ridiculous. So that means the rate of committing another crime and going back into prison because they have now been trained in the culture of prison. They were potentially they were happy there. They had three square meals a day. They had a bed that they didn't have to worry about paying for. They didn't have necessarily any work, which is a different issue that I'm going to bring up because slavery exists. And I don't know if you know this, but the 13th Amendment, the amendment of the United States Constitution, which outlawed slavery, has an exception for as a punishment for committing a crime. So we allow slavery in this country as punishment for committing crime. It's the one exception 
to our, our prohibition against slavery. And so is it any wonder that our population in the prison system just keeps getting bigger and bigger? And these for profit systems are having the inmates create stuff. They make license plates, they make toys, they make all these little things that it's just one big factory with basically free labor that the state is paying the private system in order to have them there in the first place. Oh man, right? Like, okay, so um, are we gonna talk about that issue? About how men are still property of a private company, in this case, in this country? And they, in essence, many of them were trained to fall into that system, to fall into this trap? No, we can't talk about that. So say that this little boy who goes through school, who has some problems, Say that this guy avoids going to prison because he stops just shy of committing crimes. But he doesn't necessarily have a great future ahead of him. He's not likely to go to college, and any of the best jobs require a college degree. So he's looking at either doing hard labor or he's looking at the military. Because the military is always looking to recruit poor men. And in fact, you'll find plenty of politicians talk about, you know, when the economy's getting better, it's that's not good for the military. We need to find ways to fix the economy so that there's more poor men again, so that the military is able to have more recruits. All right, and just so you think I'm not hating on the military, I was I started a nonprofit in Nevada that was focused on helping disabled veterans get their benefits. I was the vice president of community development for the Association of the United States Army here in the in Las Vegas. I was part of the John C. Fremont chapter of AUSA. I am a huge supporter of armed forces and our military. I'm a huge supporter. Doesn't mean that the system isn't set up a certain way. Just, I, just because I'm not blind to it and my eyes aren't completely blinded by the stars and stripes, like being a good American means raising your voice, speaking truth to power, saying what needs to be said so that we can fix our institutions. And one of the institutions that men are going off into at much, much, much higher rate than women is the armed services. And they literally sign a contract for their life to the U.S. government. The U.S. government, if they want to perform experiments on you, well, that's your ticket, buddy. That's just the lot you, you drew when it came to the contract that you had. Okay, and, you know, that's one, that's one thing. And we have a volunteer army. Like, you don't have to sign that contract. I get it. Many of these men don't feel that they have a choice. They're told that they need to go provide. They need to find something, make their life have meaning. And so the military is one of those solutions. But um, there's this other thing that comes with the military that women don't have to worry about. They're, they're quite privileged in this regard. And it's called the draft. And I had a draft card. I still have it somewhere. But um, there's a card that every man has to have at age 18. Starting at age 18, you have to have a draft card. You have to register for the draft. And if you don't, you go to jail. And again, there's the private prisons and you know potential slavery in the jail. So if you do not sign up to be called at any time by the US government in order to lay your life down for, on behalf of your country, you can go to jail where you might have to lay your life down anyway to do work for the corporate overlords. So, okay, cool. My car never got pulled. We didn't, I didn't have to worry about a draft, but it just so happened that um, we, the war in Afghanistan and Iraq started two years before I turned 18. So here I am like, uh, here's another major war overseas and the U.S. at any time can institute a draft in order to, you know, shut this down and win the war. And I have, to, I have to have this over my head the entire time. Every time I move, I have to update where I'm moving. Otherwise, I can go to jail for that too, right? And why, why just men? I mean, this is one of those, those conversations that people actually do talk about sometimes, but they never come to a resolution. No one has ever come to a resolution. No law has been passed to change or modify this discussion about why are women not included in the draft. There are... Plenty of women in the armed forces. It's, it's mostly men, I'll give you that. But there are plenty of women in the armed forces. There are plenty of women who can lift probably more than I can, and I work out, all right? I, um, 
Um, I know a woman that I went to law school with. She is a prosecutor and a bodybuilder. This woman is ripped, right? She can probably do pretty well in the armed forces if she was put there, right? But why don't we, why don't we talk about this? Why don't we have this conversation? Why is it that our politicians ignore this? Well, it's simple. They're pandering. They're pandering to women. They don't want women to vote against them by actually talking about real equality. If we don't talk about real equality, we can keep making it seem like that we're doing the things that these demographic groups need in order to vote for us. Whereas we're ignoring the principles by which we're supposed to be operating on. And that's what liberals do. They ignore their principles at every opportunity they can in order to sneak out another couple votes so that they can have power. And when they're in power, do they do any of the things that they say they're gonna do? No. They'll throw a bone here. They might talk about raising taxes. They might even raise taxes on a business here and there. But there's so many loopholes that it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter if you raise taxes on a business. Liberals don't understand this. If you raise taxes on a business, the business raises the price of their product or service. And guess what? The business doesn't pay the tax. The customer ends up paying that tax. So who are they really charging when they raise taxes on businesses in this way? Okay, well, let's talk about raising taxes on the rich. Okay, well, let's raise taxes on the rich. So we're going to raise the income rate. Do you understand that most rich people don't actually have any income? But we're talking about W-2 income, the type, of in the type of money that you get by providing labor or doing services for somebody. They don't get that. Their money's coming from businesses, their capital gains. But we don't absolutely don't want to talk about capital gains taxes. You will not get the Democrats to agree on a capital gains tax because their corporate overlords don't want them to do that either. All right? Like, they are pandering. Nobody's actually talking about real equality out here. Okay. So let us say that our, our boy who got through school somehow, even though he's got a small disciplinary record, because even I got detention. I got detention because the teacher heard me curse one time. Ah, oh, man. Right? So on my permanent record, I was cursing and swearing. Oh, I got, I got to do detention. Had to explain to my parents why I was held after school. Got in trouble by them, too, for it. Okay, but that's, I, I was still, otherwise that was it. All right, I didn't, I wasn't too bad. Um, but our boy, he gets through school. Maybe he doesn't go to the military, maybe he does, but he gets out, okay? He's out and he's living in general society now. He's, he's now a civilian and maybe he's poor because you know, his job prospects aren't that good. Like if his grades weren't good in high school, he's got a high school degree, maybe no college degree. If he's a veteran, like he definitely didn't go to college. So he's now just a veteran, right? And I'd say just a veteran, but he's a veteran. And employers, when they see it, a veteran, employers see the word Watsi in front of their eyes. And that's the uh, work opportunity tax credit, which says that if you hire a veteran, then you get a tax uh, deduction of some type, a tax credit of some type. All right, so that's why they'll hire veterans. It's not necessarily because they think a veteran's gonna do a better job than someone with a college degree, but they're being incentivized monetarily to do it. All right, same with convicts. You know, if you hire a convict who's recently been out, then you get a tax credit. Uh, same with mothers, if I recall. But if you're just a guy, say you didn't go to armed services, say you didn't go to prison, say you just got through school, you got through school, you got your high school diploma, you don't go to college, you get a job, but your job doesn't exactly pay all that well. And, you know, times are tough. The economy is seemingly turning. The media is always talking about how we're in recession. It's just right around the corner. They're just like, it's just right there, guys. Just you wait, it's coming, they tell us. And we sit here and, and these guys um, say the recession does happen. Well, businesses have to tighten their belts, right? And so they're gonna tighten their belts in ways that are probably not going to benefit this guy here who's working you know, a low-wage job, a hard physical job. And so he's got to worry about now providing for himself because no, how else is he supposed to do it? There is basically no civil, or there's no social services out there or social programs designed to help a poor man. So if he loses his job, he might get unemployment insurance, but say he doesn't. 
Say you got furloughed instead. Okay, well, we're, we're planning on you coming back to work, but you're not fired. You're not, you haven't been, uh, haven't been let go yet, but, you know, we're, we're hope to pay you someday. He's got to make, and see, we saw this in the pandemic. There's very few social services for men. Women, they can find it something no problem. All right, there's plenty of services for women, plenty of organizations looking to help women out there. When it comes to men, there's very few. And so our man, maybe he comes, becomes homeless. If I recall, it's like 70%. I'm going to look it up real quick. All right. Uh, what percent of men are of homeless are men? All right. So 60.6% of homeless individuals in the United States are men. That's a lot. In fact, oh, no, we got um, National Alliance to End Homelessness says... 70% of men. Okay, that's even worse. All right. Yeah. Okay. So 70% of men, or 70% of homeless people are men. And there are very few services to help this man get back on his feet. But yet, at the same time, society is going to tell this man that he just needs to figure it out. Just go get a job, dude. Like, just figure it out. Go pay, get some money. Get a place to stay. You'll be fine. Right. I, I have the scene from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia pop in my head. Yeah, I'll just go get a job. I'll just, like, fire out of my job cannon and land in the land of uh, Jobopia where jo jobs are hanging from the job trees. Right? Like, what is a homeless man who has a high school diploma? Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's got a GED. Maybe he doesn't even have that. He has no nowhere to turn. No one's looking to help him. He and other than services that want him to to stay at their facility because they get money from the government to bring homeless people in. And they're going to try to get him to just pray to God. And that's more or less all they're going to have him do. Pray and get one meal or two meals, stay the night and then get out the next day. All right, These homeless shelters are not that fun, not cool at all. And then, you know, um, he, this guy's in trouble, but there's nothing there. And even if he is a veteran, okay, as a veteran, something happens to him in service. He gets out. He's got some disability. He's got to jump through a whole bunch of hoops to be able to be compensated on any of those disabilities. I had a company that was focused on helping dis veterans with disabilities. It is a pain in the butt. It is really tough to get the government to acknowledge that you were actually harmed in such a way to be able to com be compensated in the way that you deserve to be as a veteran. And, and let alone the fact that most veterans don't even want to apply for benefits because they think that they're not as bad off as some of the other guys that they saw in service who had it much worse, who were harmed way worse, and they deserve it more. Never mind the fact that the money's there for everybody. Actually, that's not even true. If every veteran who was who deserved compensation because of a disability uh, that was caused during their time in service applied for the compensation and was approved for it because they they're entitled to it, the U.S. government absolutely would not be able to pay that bill. They do not have near enough money in that system to do so. And if the the veterans actually asked for their money the way they should. The, I would imagine that we would actually see that program be curtailed or ended just because they don't want to acknowledge how much it takes to compensate our men and women who go into the armed services and get hurt because of uh, negligence, because of just the way the system is set up. We, we don't want to talk about that either. We don't even want to talk about veterans in this country, let alone men, let alone, you know, 50% or so of the population. Nope. We're told, go get a job. And what we'll do is we'll tell them, you know what? There's there's logging jobs you can go get. There are uh, jobs doing welding on high rises and skyscrapers. You can go get that job. All right? Like, you essentially, you have to risk your life, is what they're saying. And but this is men. For women, we have services. We have programs that will help women get out of poverty, We'll help them get out of being a homeless woman. We'll set them up. We'll help them get jobs. We'll help them integrate back into society. And yet we're ignoring men. We are essentially willing to throw men in the trash in this country, in this, on this planet, all over the planet. We're willing to throw men in the trash just because of our sex. Simply because we are men. We are different. We are treated different. And it's not right. So...
If you agree with me, let me know. If you disagree with me, let me know. I want to continue this conversation. I want to have this talk. And you know what? If you comment, I'm very likely to tell the people about your comment because I want other voices involved here. I want people reading what's going on and having a conversation. It's not just me. We need to extend this conversation beyond just me being a voice shouting into the dark, right? You need to be involved. You need to be talking to. You need to be addressing these issues too. Because if we do not raise our voices, they will continue to silence us. That's, that is and was it has been the creed of every other demographic group fighting for their rights. That if you do not raise your voice, then you are tacitly approving of what is happening in society. And I am not going to stand for it anymore. So join with me. Let's raise our voices. Let's be heard. Let's go out there and fight for men's right to life, the right to be happy, the right to be whoever they want to be, just because they have a right as a human being to be it. Keep looking for the light in the tempest, guys. God will show you the way.